so this is kind of a loading animation. It's also kind of not a loading animation. Really, I don't know what it is I'm teaching you today, but it is procedural. There are a lot of tricks that you will learn in this tutorial to create this kind of effect. So without further ado, maybe, maybe I should show you how to do this thing. So I have Blender open. This is version 2.83. You can use version 2.9, 2.7, I don't care. Pretty much all of it works. And to make this circle with the thing in the middle, which is procedural and you could do a bunch of variations, uh, really all you need to do is I'm gonna go th to the top view so we can look top down, kind of like an eagle flying. We're gonna delete the cube. We're gonna instead add a circle and we're gonna do the mesh version of a circle, not necessarily the curve version of a circle. So mesh. And at this point, you wanna decide how many vert vertices, vertexes, you wanna decide how much uh, geometry this circle is gonna have, and that's gonna be how many lines are branching into the middle. So fewer is gonna be like, you know, fewer lines and more is gonna be more. So I'm gonna stick with the default 32. We're gonna go into edit mode, F for fill, which is gonna turn this into a filled in circle with an ungone in the middle. That's how it works. And then finally, F3 or spacebar for you, I don't know. Uh, run this thing and type in poke faces, which I already did because pre premature typing, if you will. Poke faces. What does that do? It puts a, a vertex in the middle of the end gone with a edge connecting to every uh, perimeter outside a vertex. Uh, which means that if we take this and move it around, you can kind of see where this effect begins. Um, if we can somehow turn all these edges into like, you know, their own pieces of geometry that doesn't have the sun gone, then we've pretty much done it minus the proceduralism. So this is the idea. Well, how do we do everything I just said? Well, first of all, to have these edges, or actually, you know what? First of all, let's control this uh, vertex. We're gonna click this vertex and instead of animating it using like shape keys or something, all you have to do is hit control H, that's control H for hook and hook to new object. Uh, a lot of people probably haven't seen this command. What it does is it creates a empty, a basically a placeholder for information. It creates an empty that actually controls the uh, vertex. Of course, you're not gonna see anything till we move it outside the circle, right? Because inside it's just gonna be in there. There's gonna be no difference. It's just a slightly different triangulated end gone, but outside you can tell what's happening. And if we go into edit mode, you still can't see this vertex being moved, and that's just because the hook, uh, which is actually added in as a modifier, right? It's a modifier. Um, it's not visible in edit mode, which I think is this button. So you just click that. And now, or maybe it's one of these, I don't know. There you go. I guess it was the second one. Now you can see that it's actually moved to our empty location. So that's how it works. Our empty now controls this point. And to make these edges into lines, I bet, I, I bet you can guess what it is we need to do. How do we do that? Well, we need the wireframe of it. So let's add in a wireframe modifier. So uh, with the circle selected under the hook, so the hook comes first, we're gonna add in a wireframe modifier. So this order of operations uh, actually matters quite a bit, I believe. So now if we move around the empty, you can see we're getting this kind of effect. If instead we had it the other way around, uh, you can see that we're getting different results at the center. Uh, one thing that I like uh, to recommend for this, uh, just for the lines, is you're gonna notice some lines are thick, some lines are thin, and that might be what you're going for. There's something going on outside. That might be what you're going for. Um, but what I like is to uh, disable even thickness and enable relative thickness with something a bit thicker, which seems to do a better job, maybe not perfect, maybe it has the same issue. Maybe if we disable it, then everything's uniform, but then it kind of pinches at the center. So I'm just gonna enable it this way. You can pick what you want. And this gives us, you know, control of this thing with, you know, good looking lines. And maybe the last thing I wanna talk about for setting this up before we talk about the whole proceduralism, which is the important part, is you're gonna notice that, yeah, we have maybe uniform-ish thickness lines, not really, but um, you're gonna notice that we have all this weird shading and that's because this wireframe is just a bunch of like rectangular prisms whereas we want this to kind of look flat shaded, well, that's easy to fix, even if we want to render an Eevee, because all we need to do is enable, enable, I mean, add, it's not enable, it's add a uh, material. We're gonna not have any BSDF nonsense. Literally, we're just gonna feed in a color. This is as flat shaded as you can get. So this is just gonna be a single color for this thing. So maybe we can make it red and we can make the background, let's say black, although I do like the idea of black and white instead. So something like that. And um, there you go. Now you have something that looks very flat shaded um, and you couldn't even tell that there is any kind of light or BSDF or any, cause there isn't uh, going on. So last part of this, how do we make this nice and procedural uh, so that we don't have to animate this empty ourselves? Well, to do this, I like to add in a path, a path for this empty to go along. So let's say we had a circle 
then this empty would go along a circle, right? That's the idea. And we're gonna automate that with drivers, but all you have to do is add in a curve. So this time we're going for the circle curve, not the mesh, uh, since we want this to be a path. And um, we can make this a bit smaller. So this is the path, the circle that will be easier to see in solid mode. This is the uh, circle that the empty is gonna go along. And of course, to make that empty do that, if you didn't know, you just select the empty constraints, add in a follow path, because that's exactly what it is. And now it is following the path with this uh, offset. Although it is behaving a bit weird, and that's because you want to zero out the empty, or yeah, zero out the empty to begin with. So it starts off at zero. Boom. When you start it off at zero, it will actually look like it's going along the circle. So if you had that issue, now you know how to fix it. Again, we don't want to keyframe this either, because that wouldn't be very, it'd be pretty automated, but not really. So instead, what I like to do is add in a driver. And what we want to do is have the frame number, what frame we're on, control the progression along the offset. So something natural to do is to right click and then you could copy as a new driver and then paste this, um, paste this here. And now you can see that controls it, but there's actually a shortcut for this. And that is, first of all, I guess we should delete the driver. If you don't want to do that, instead you could just type in hashtag, that's what the kids are calling it, maybe octothorpe or tag, hash, whatever. A hashtag frame, which is basically saying make a driver, that's what the hashtag means. Make a driver using the frame number, click enter. And now you have basically the same thing. But the nice thing about this is we have a bit more control. So we could divide this by two, which means it will go half the speed. Or we could do the opposite. We can multiply this by like four. So it's going to go even faster. And you can see how this gives us more control. So I'm just going to have it go two times speed. And of course, this is procedure, right? It's just going along a path. There's this whole wireframe nonsense. But of course, um, at any time, we could just modify this path. And then it does the same kind of effect uh, let's go into rendered mode. It does the same kind of effect with a modified path. If you enable the extra curves add-on, which I believe you just go to preferences, add-ons, type in like curves and look for enable add-on, I don't know. You look for extra objects maybe. Yeah, look for extra objects and add curve, enable that one. That will give you all these um, curves that I have. You see I have a bunch of weird ones and you could have it follow any of those paths. Additionally, you can change the number of edges uh, that you have coming. Basically, you change the initial circle that you give it. Of course, this isn't uh, that procedural because Blender has you bake in the object uh, stuff. Hopefully, one day that's fixed. But um, mo most of this is procedural in a sense, and it renders very quickly. And of course, uh, there's no reason that you can't have the path go outside the circle. It would just look a bit strange. If anything, this kind of just looks like a cone. Uh, where we're changing the uh, focus of it. I think that's what it's called. But um, there you go. I feel like this is a super simple tutorial that has really cool looking results. Let me just recenter the circle. Has really cool looking results, kind of a mathematical um, animation almost. But there you go. I hope you enjoyed this very, very simple tutorial. And I hope you learned about hooking objects, uh, maybe a bit of proceduralism, follow path, etc. If you enjoyed this free, I may add this free tutorial, check out my Patreon. This is the best way to support this channel and keep it afloat. But of course, you get stuff in return. You don't just get the good feeling in your heart, but you also get exclusive tutorials if that's what you pay for. You also get behind the scenes content. You also get Discord access. You also get blend files. So something like this might be added as a blend file, even though it's pretty simple. But in other cases, it's not so simple. So Patreon is in the description for those of you interested. I really appreciate it. These patrons run the show effectively in the sense that they uh, are the producers. They're the ones who make it possible. I guess that's a way to put it. Um, either way, thank you for watching this free tutorial. I hope you learned something and that's the show. Bye-bye.